Right now I'm in New York. I arrived yesterday from Istanbul. Um, today I'm in New York. And you would mention as we were setting this up that, that it's good to be in New York. Why? Absolutely. I like the city very much. I like the energy here. You know, the whole um, movement. It's, uh, it's, it's dear to me. And in some ways I see similarities between New York and, and Istanbul. So um, I feel very much at, at home when I come here. And speaking of home, you did not grow up in just one place. You were born in France. You spent some time as a child living in Spain, Jordan, and Germany, and obviously in Turkey as well. How do you think, in terms of your writing, how do you think growing up in all these different settings around the world helped you develop as a writer versus if you just grew up in one place? You know, I've always felt it had a huge impact um, on my writing and also on my personality, my worldview. This sense of being a nomad or a, or, a, or a more nomadic existence. At the beginning, it wasn't my choice. You know, I was kind of born into this. But then in time, I realized I cannot settle down in one place and stay there for a long time. Just I need to keep moving. And in many ways, I do feel connected to different cities, different cultures. That said, um, I'm also very attached to Istanbul and I think that is quite possible, you know, to be um, both from one place and to be from, you know, everywhere, to be a world citizen at the same time. There is actually a metaphor that I like very much and, and to me it explains all this. Um, imagine living this life like a drawing compass. You know, one leg of the drawing compass, as we know, is quite static. It is based in one place, right? But we, meanwhile, the other leg draws a huge white circle around it, always moving. Just like that, one leg of my writing, one part of my writing, is solidly based in Istanbul, in, in Turkey, in the Turkish culture, particularly women's culture, oral culture, and its deep and rich history. But that said, the other leg, the other part of my writing, is constantly drawing a huge white circle around it and it's constantly on the move. And that's why I think um, my writing is both local and, and, and from everywhere at the same time. That part of you that is everywhere at the same time, your love of the nomadic life that, that you just talked to me about, is in direct contrast to becoming a mother, becoming a parent. It's what you talk about in Black Milk. In terms of why you wanted to write it, why did you want to write it and, and talk about what is both a happy time but also a very difficult time for you? Well, thank you. I mean, in, in many ways, um, Black Milk is so different from my all other works because usually when I'm writing a novel, I, I don't write about, you know, my personal life or my personal experience. And I don't think in that, in the strictest sense, um, literature doesn't have to be autobiographical. Of course, there, there's always something autobiographical. There's an autobiographical dimension in it. However, what intrigues me, what interests me much more than that, has always been, you know, telling the story from other people's points of view, trying to understand how it feels to be the other, you know, putting myself in the shoes of other lives, other, 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 other people. So I've always been, um, you know, very, in, in my writing, also, I like to travel, um, let me put it that way. However, when I was writing Black Milk, it's, it started as a memoir. It was so that the starting point was my own personal experience. And in some ways, I think I had to do that. It was like a healing for me, to be honest, to write this book. And it was so much more at the same time. Following the birth of my first child, I experienced um, a, a depression, a postpartum depression that went on for like 10 months. And in many ways, it was an existential crisis for me. It was, you know, so much more than a depression because I had to rethink about what it, what, what it means to be a writer, what it means to create something. You know, are we really the creators of our work? Because until that day, I had taken for granted, perhaps in an, you know, arrogant way without knowing it, that I had this talent uh, of storytelling and all I needed to do was just to find a pen and, the, and, and some paper. Um, I thought this was my only suitcase wherever I went around the world. My imagination would come with me and I would keep writing stories. All of a sudden, the storytelling was cut off from me, you know. Uh, I've, been t I've been writing stories, I've been writing 
imagining stories since I was eight years old. It never stopped. This was the first and only time. So it encouraged me, it urged me, it, it, in a way, com I felt compelled to look within and to think about creativity. That's why in my eyes, black milk is not solely about, you know, depression and all that, but also these multiple voices that we have inside us. I believe every human being, whether man or woman, doesn't make a difference, is composed of conflicting and coexisting voices. Usually what we do is we honor one of those voices, sometimes at the expense of others, and that's what I found inside me. I do talk about depression in this book, but I talk about it with humor, and that was very important. So to be able to see my own mistakes, to make fun of them, um, to deal with depression through humor, uh, all that process, writing process, was quite transformative for me. And when I finished the book, I was not the same person anymore. Do you feel that you were a better writer at the end of all this because of the experience that you went through? Um, I think in in some ways, uh, it might sound a bit odd to say that, but I think in some ways depressions are a golden opportunity to reconstruct ourselves because when everything is fine, everything is going well, we just don't question anything about ourselves, you know, it's just fine, why, why should you do that? But when you are experiencing such an existential problem, you, you just stop, look inside, and when you hit the ground so hard, all the, your little pieces are scattered and then you have to sit down and reorganize, restructure everything and perhaps the outcome will be much better than you know the structure you had earlier. So it is an opportunity um, to renew ourselves and I think that renewal process is important. I don't know if I'm a better writer, if I'm a better mother because I experienced this, but I do believe that it helped me a lot and, and in some ways it does bring you to another another level. In terms of being a writer, do you have a sense if it's easier for a writer to be a father versus a writer who's a mother? You know, it's a question I've been thinking about and I don't want to be unfair um, and I by no means, you know, I, I cannot belittle the hardships that lots of male writers are going through all around the world because particularly in patriarchal societies I don't think it's an easy thing to be a man you know the definition of manhood is pre-given and you have to conform to that ro role however um, again in particularly patriarchal settings I think it is very demanding this role of motherhood womanhood you know what is what exactly is being expected of you for, for women um, the transformations in life can be can be harder and there's so many things you need to juggle at the same time and you're expected to be very good at all of them and that was one of the things I realized as I was writing Black Milk you know my grandmother's generation they were less educated women definitely less modernized however they knew at certain stages in their lives women need help Whereas my mother's generation grew up thinking they could do everything on their own, which, which sounds good, but it is not the truth. You know, there are certain times when we need help. And because I'm so used to doing everything on my own since my early childhood, also it's because I grew up as a single child, I was raised by a single mother, and I think all this had an effect on me. Um, in some ways it makes you more independent, maybe kind of more courageous, you know, definitely it has its positive aspects, but I realize I don't know how to say, okay, I need help right now because I don't know how to how to go through this process. Do you see this book as, as reaching out to people who have dealt with not only issues of postpartum depression, but are thinking of having kids and have those questions about, can I balance a career and being a parent at the same time? You know, I believe these questions are so common um, and we, we do ask Perhaps our answers might differ, you know, depending on the person, but the questions that we're dealing with, they're very, very universal. And I'm not necessarily talking about people having children or, or you know, going through this process, but also, um, you know, people who are creative. Also, um, you know, coming back to your earlier question, what it means to be a women writer in a more patriarchal setting, um, I think that's important because, you know, 
when you're a male writer, you're a writer first and foremost. Nobody keeps saying you're a male writer. You know, you're just called an author. Whereas when you're a woman writer, you're, you're seen as a woman first and then as a writer. Um, there's always this adjective, you know, following, following you. And that affects the perception of, of the readers, of, the, of literary critics, etc. So it's also a book about um, women writers, their lives from all over the world, not only Turkish writers or, or writers from the Eastern world, but also from America, from Europe, um, past and present. It was very intriguing to me to see their lives uh, more closely and to look at their relationships with their children or their relationship with the notion of motherhood. And I think lots of the themes that we have, we deal with or we fail to deal with are very universal. Do you read your kids' stories or do you make up stories to tell them? I do both, actually, but stories are very important for me and that's the way I connect, you know, um, with the world. So we make up stories together and I'm also learning a lot. A child's imagination, of course, is fabulous. And in some ways we, you know, we lose that over the years. Um, so it's not only me making up stories and them listening passively, but my children also make stories with me and I'm also learning from them. I think as mothers and fathers, we're constantly learning from our, from our children. We are their students in many ways. In addition to your books and your fiction, you're also a columnist, a journalist. Um, I know you just had a, had a column in, in The Guardian um, mm -hmm. recently on, on the relationship between France and Turkey. Um, right. But I did want to ask you, in terms of your books, can you talk to me about what you're working on now? Um, well, this I, now I'm dividing my time between London and Istanbul. And um, just recently, um, this year, I finished my new novel. Uh, it will be coming out in 2012 and basically it's a, it's a family story, it's an immigrant family story. It takes place in four locations but mostly in London in, in um, late 1970s which was an amazing time you know when the punk movement was at its height. Um, there was also a lot of in some ways anger, people were you know demonstrating questions, lots, questioning lots of things uh, widely within that framework having a half Turkish half Kurdish immigrant family in Hackney in London and looking closely at their lives you know the the things the trajectory the journeys they they go through um, some parts of, of the book take place in a, in a little village in in the uh, in Turkey uh, as I said mostly takes place in London there are scenes in Istanbul and also scenes in Abu Dhabi so I connect all these places throughout 1950s 60s but mostly 1970s and basically I'm, I'm looking at um, the notion of honor you know how we hurt the most the people who are closest to us how we hurt the most those whom we love the most um, because you know families are very complicated units at the same time there's a, certainly there's a lot of love and support but there's also a lot of hurt and misunderstanding among family members so I'm looking more closely at all those and I'm also looking at the ways in which masculinity is being constructed and sometimes you know men also suffer from 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 that um, it's a book that's you know in some ways it's very sad in some ways it's very poignant, but again, it has a lot of compassion in it. What's your favorite place in the world? Oh dear, that's, <laughs> that's a tough question for me. You know, I, as I said, I, I love Istanbul, and yet at the same time there's this pendulum for me. I have to go back to the city and then move away from the city. Um, in terms of cities, I love, I love New York, I love London, I love Amsterdam, I love Istanbul. And you know these keep re-emerging in, in in my fiction as well, but basically I think what I like most is to be on the move all the time. And while you are on the move, talking about your new book Black Milk, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Alicia Shafak, thank you so much. Thank you, my pleasure.